The HIJ Masishitsuchi was laid down on the 21st of... Hang on. What is this shit? Oh, hang on. That's my phone. Go for Eldritch. Bullshit police, you say? Well, good day to you, officer. Yeah, that's right, officer. I was just looking for pictures of the Ishitsuchi, and all I was finding were these pictures of this modern-day Japanese transport ship. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Design prototype for the Congo class, you say? Never made it past the stage of being some undergraduate engineer's drunk napkin scribblings, you say? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Not even any records online that this is anything more than an invention by Wargaming to fill a Tier 4 premium slot? Uh-huh. Well, I'll say. As a Tier 4 premium battleship, we of course have to compare the Ishitsuchi to the Miyogi and the Wyoming. The Ishitsuchi has exactly the same hit points as the Miyogi, with 45,700, and they come in just ahead of the Wyoming, which has 43,800. However, it has to be said that both the Ishitsuchi and the Miyogi have pretty big Citadel hit zones, whereas the Wyoming Citadel hit zones are kind of difficult to hit, because they're slightly lower in the ship's hull and as such more of them is covered by the waterline. It just makes it more difficult to hit the Citadel. On the other hand, the Wyoming is a very wide ship with a very big superstructure, which makes it kind of susceptible to HE fire. The Ishitsuchi comes in at 27.9 knots, which is just a little bit slower than the Miyogi, which runs at 29 knots. And both these ships are so much faster than the Wyoming, which can only do 20.9 knots. At tier 4, having only 20.9 knots top speed is kind of a problem, because it does mean that sometimes you're just gonna be a bit late to the party. The Wyoming, like all American battleships, has an amazing turning circle of 590 meters, and the Ishitsuchi has the biggest turning circle with 740 meters, although it's only 10 meters wider than the Miyogi's turning circle of 730. The rudder shift time on both these Japanese battleships is very similar, and they both handily beat out the Wyoming. The concealment is probably the Ishitsuchi's biggest problem. It gets spotted at 16.6 kilometers, which is exactly the same as the Miyogi. However, as we'll see in the next category, this does mean that you'll be visible to the opponent before you're able to engage them with your guns. That can be a big drawback against experienced players. The Miyogi also gets detected before it's in gun range, but the discrepancy is much, much smaller, and the Wyoming actually has enough stealth to be in gun range when it gets spotted. Looking at the guns, we'll see the absolute strength of the Ishitsuchi. The Ishitsuchi comes with 305mm guns, just like the Wyoming. The Miyogi might have larger caliber guns, but it only has 6 guns, and 4 of these guns are mounted on the aft of the ship. The Miyogi's gun layout is one of the worst in the game. To actually bring your firepower to bear, you have to be basically broadside on to the enemy, presenting your very big citadel. This is definitely the biggest disadvantage of the Miyogi, and it reflects itself in its absolutely atrocious DPS. The Ishitsuchi with its 10 guns brings a very, very nice amount of firepower, and because it's a Japanese ship, it has really good high explosive ammunition, with a high damage potential and a high chance of fire. Out of the three of these ships, the Ishitsuchi does the best with its HE ammunition. It can do a lot of work, but don't focus on it too much and remember to always use your AP ammunition when it's good to do so, like when there's a cruiser or battleship side on to you. One of the biggest weaknesses of the Ishitsuchi is that it has such a short gun range. 12.9 kilometers is not impressive whatsoever, and you will meet even cruisers who are going to outrange you. The Ishitsuchi also has a pretty slow turret traverse, which can sometimes get you into trouble, but it's not anywhere near as bad as it is on the Warspite. The secondary guns on the Ishitsuchi are fantastic and just as good as on the Miyogi. The only difference being that the small caliber dual purpose guns have been replaced by 120mm guns on the Miyogi. And as such, the possible damage output is a little bit higher on the Miyogi, but in the end it really doesn't make that much of a difference, because they both still have 8 152mm guns on both sides. In secondary guns, the Wyoming just does not keep up, and when hounded by destroyers has to entirely rely on its maneuverability. In the Ishitsuchi and Miyogi, especially if you take some commander skills to support it, you can really rip apart destroyers with your secondary guns. Lastly, we come to the category of anti-aircraft, and this is where the Ishitsuchi drops the ball. 18 DPS at 2 kilometers is awful. The Ishitsuchi has worse anti-aircraft than the Hashidate at tier 1. That's how bad it is. Ever since the open beta, the Miyogi actually has the best anti-aircraft armament of any tier 4 battleship, with a total of up to 108 DPS at 900 meters. Now given 900 meters is not that much, and it's not often going to prevent torpedoes from being fired at you, because at that range they've already been fired, but it's still nice to have, and it can net you some extra kills of aircraft that foolishly fly overhead. 
The Wyoming Sentai aircraft looks good on paper, but it doesn't actually end up performing all that well, because it only starts firing at 2.5 kilometers range. By that point, the planes are already on their attack run and about to drop their torpedoes. It's going to be rare for you to shoot down a plane before they drop their load. I've decided to change the scoring slightly. If I'm comparing a set of ships and they end up being equal in a category, but equally good, then I'm going to give all of them a point instead of giving none of them a point. It makes sense because they are all good enough to earn that point. And so in the category of survivability, all three of these ships receive a point because they have a good amount of hit points and are well armored for a tier 4 battleship. In the category of speed, the clear winner is the Miyogi. With 29 knots top speed and 16 second rudder shift time, the Miyogi is quite capable of engaging an enemy quickly. A 730 meter turning circle isn't amazing, but it's definitely good enough for a battleship. The Ishitsuchi is just slightly behind the Miyogi in this category, and the Wyoming, even though it has a great turning circle, is just too slow and too sluggish to make it in this category. The category of concealment goes to the Wyoming because it's the only one of these three ships that can fire its guns as soon as it is detected. The other two are long visible before they are in gun range, which is a big problem for them. In the category of guns, the clear winners are the Ishitsuchi and the Wyoming. Even though the Ishitsuchi has such a slow turret traverse and such a low gun range, its really good DPS and fire chance, the Wyoming with its 12 guns has so much incredible firepower, especially with its AP rounds. The Miyogi on the other hand just is not adequate. With such a low DPS and such a low gun count, every miss hurts even more than it does with any other battleship. On the Ishitsuchi, if you miss a shot, it really doesn't matter all that much because there's nine others flying toward the target. But on the Miyogi, every single one of your shots that doesn't go to the target is so incredibly frustrating. But the Miyogi makes up for this in secondary guns as it definitely has a very, very good secondary armament. However, just like the Ishitsuchi, both of these Japanese ships have great secondary gun batteries that can absolutely rip targets to shreds. Their only weakness being that it's only a 3.5 kilometers range. But if anyone ever gets that close, may Poseidon be with him. Anti-aircraft batteries go straight to the Miyogi because it has a really solid anti-aircraft armament for tier 4. The Shitsuchi has very bad anti-aircraft guns, but I don't think taking a point from it is necessary, just because aircraft carriers are not that game-changing at tier 4. In total, this leaves us with a score of 3 to 3 to 3. Now let's look at some of the quirks of the Shitsuchi. There's really only one very important thing to look out for when you play the Ishitsuchi, and that is it is absolutely paramount that you find yourself a cruiser or another ship with some decent anti-aircraft capabilities, because you get absolutely wrecked by planes. You cannot really defend yourself against them apart from dodging, right? If this guy hadn't been well, new at playing carriers, I would have been dead. There's nothing I can do about it because my anti-aircraft gun fires like once every couple of fucking seconds and it doesn't do anything to the planes. DPS is just too low. So, look out! So this particular review is a little bit different than my usual reviews and the reason for that is that I just don't like playing battleships at all. I find battleships incredibly boring, and I'm not saying battleships are too strong or too weak. I actually don't play them nearly enough to really make a judgment on that, but the real problem with battleships to me is in the design. I find the gameplay that they have been designed with to just be really, really uninteresting. You're slow, you're sluggish, you fire your gun a maximum of twice per minute. It's just such a slow-paced game style that personally I just fall asleep playing battleships. It's awful. I just need snappier, faster-paced gameplay, and I get that in cruisers, and I get that in destroyers, and I even get that in carriers. Yes, I find battleships even more boring than carriers. The point I'm trying to make is there's just really no point in me showing you a replay, because all the games I've played were just incredibly average. Out of 10 games, I played one really bad game where I died pretty early to torpedoes, and the other 9 games were just average. 
one to two kills, a few hits, but nothing special happened, nothing interesting happened, the games dragged on and on, it just wasn't really that entertaining and I didn't really feel comfortable making a commentary about it, because it really would have just been a bunch of filler with like three minutes of action somewhere in between there. And so I decided that instead I'm just going to show you some gameplay in the background, and I'm just going to talk about what I personally think about the Ishitsuchi, and where I think it, you know, fits in into the game. And basically, the Ishitsuchi is a really good battleship. If you like the Congo class, you will definitely also like the Ishitsuchi. Because the Ishitsuchi plays a lot like a downgraded version of the Congo. It looks a lot like a Congo, it moves a lot like a Congo. It has 10 guns and pretty much the same layout as the Congo. And all you're lacking is just a few stat points here and there, a bunch of anti-aircraft and a chunk of hit points, and that's really it. So basically, the Ishitsuchi is a premium Congo at tier 4 with some downsides. That doesn't sound all that bad to me. So again, if you like Japanese battleships, or if you like the Congo specifically, and you're looking for a premium ship, Ishitsuchi is a really good choice for you. But if you're not into the Congo, and if you're not into Japanese battleships, then there really is no point in picking up the Ishitsuchi, because it offers absolutely nothing new. It is in fact, of all the premium ships in the game right now, the most generic. Yes, even the Murmansk, being a straight-up Omaha class ship, has more flair than the Ishitsuchi. But it is a fine premium ship that will set you back 11 euros or 12-ish dollars, that is only available on the gift shop, which personally I think is a fair price, because it does make a decent chunk of credits because of its low repair cost. And if nothing else, it is definitely better than the War Spite, which is now no longer available in the game. Good riddance. If you enjoyed this review, please consider liking and subscribing. What are your thoughts on the Ishitsuchi? Have you bought it already? Have you played against it? Do you think it's good or do you think it's a pile of shit? Also, what do you think about the layout of this review with not having a replay? Should I keep it this way? Should I just drop the replays from my reviews? Or do you like the replays and think I should put them back in in the future? Tell me about it in the comments. My next World of Warships video will be the map tactics on Big Race. But until then, I've been Eldritch Master Donkey, and I'll see you in another video.